Hi guys, Tom Moran from Tom's Big Spiders. This is going to be a fun one for me because we're going to do something a little different with it. This clip that's about to come up and then the ensuing clips afterwards were all started when I was doing the Off the Tongs Challenge for March Tarantulas. I decided it would be a cool idea to try to get my skull pendra de honey feeding. Uh, dumb move on my part because those guys can shoot right up the tongs and there was no chance I was going to hold the tongs in there. So I don't know why I thought this would be a good idea. But anyway, while feeding, Billy and I noticed something that was a little bit alarming. It looked like there were quite a bit of mites in it. Now, I've had very, very good luck with mites and not having mites. I've had uh, grain mites in one enclosure to date that I know of. And basically, I just let it dry out. The mites went away. There was no problem. They were gone. And uh, these guys tend to be the bane of the hobby when people get mites. They freak out. But most cases, they're grain mites, which are harmless to the tarantulas. They're just unsightly, and, and you really don't want to see your spider in there with little bugs crawling all over. It freaks you out. I digress. So anyway, we had already planned on rehousing these guys and getting on video, so we figured this would be an excellent opportunity to not only rehouse, but show how you might get mites off of it. Yada, yada, yada. Anyway, it turned out being turning into a little bit of a mystery and kind of had a funny, we'll say, twist ending on it. So here we go. I'm going to show the first part of the video, and then I'm going to come back in the middle and talk a little bit more because, God forbid, we get away from my face for a little bit. And then we'll go back to how it all turned out. I'll explain it in the end. So without any more further ado, here is the original feeding clip and some good footage of my Scolopendra Dihani actually feeding. Scolopendra Dihani, one of my centipedes and of course these guys can go up the tongs i'm gonna be really careful for this oh my gosh yeah this thing got big this, these are getting rehoused probably sunday all right yeah. So crazy. I need these in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's like so crazy. Uh, oh god. You want to put it right up against the top. It's not gonna come up the thing, right? No, I can't get up the. It's these sides of it are uh, too tall for it. It's got things on it. What is that? It might be mites. Ew. That's not good. I'm going to definitely have to rehouse that one. Ew, they're like everywhere. No, that's going to be fun to wash off. Oh, man. That's not going to be fun. Drop some of those predatory mites in there. Yeah. Big dude. All right, skull pendra to honey. That wasn't too bad, except that definitely wasn't off the tongs. And now I gotta go clean these mites off it. Okay. All right. So after that video was shot, Billy and I decided it was time to rehouse the next day, even though we planned on taking a trip up to Massachusetts to hit a pet store. We got up in the morning, got everything set up, got the camera set up, tried to get some multi-angles, because that's my new thing now, trying to get brownie points for multi-angles. And anyway, we went to do the actual rehousing and filming of trying to get some of the mites off it. Now, one of the ways you can get mites off a tarantula is you can take a Q-tip, you can wet it down, and the mites will kind of stick to it. You can go and kind of dab them off. With the centipede, unfortunately, it being as big as it is, and the fact that it could shoot off tongs, we tried to do something a little bit different here. So basically, when you see, when I get to it, when I get in the cup, we put a little warm water in the bottom, and then used a brush to try to brush them off. It actually worked very, very well, as you will see in a moment. But we did cut for a minute during this one, only because I really needed to concentrate on rehousing this centipede as you will see and I've made comments about it. Billy's terrified of the thing she uh, says she doesn't like it I think that just means she's intimidated by it and I'm not gonna lie I can't predict these guys movements like I can with the tarantulas and the common spiders they just move so quickly and they will grab onto stuff so here is the rehousing with the removal of the mites and then I will be back again at the end sorry you're getting a lot of me this time to explain how this all turned out so here we go, rehousing video. All right, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders, about to rehouse my uh, Billy's favorite animal no, in my collection. No, yes, it is. No. One of the, oh, it's not in there. It's called Pendra de Hanis, or the there. giant centipedes. No, I mean, it's uh, not out. 
Now, just a heads up, we did a feeding video with this guy the other day, and we looked in, and there were little, what looked like mites crawling all over. I'm going to take some of them out and put them over the microscope, but they were moving pretty fast, which threw me off. So a little confused. I'm not going to pretend to be an expert in that stuff because I've had mites, I think, once that I know of, and I dried out the enclosure. They died off, and everything was perfectly fine. In this case, there was quite a few of them. So these guys can shoot up the tongs. I've got a lot of tongs here. And if I'm being completely honest, this one's got me a little bit nervous only because I've never rehoused one, and I've seen how quick they move and how strong they can be. So let's go ahead and get this out of the way. And what I'm going to hopefully do, I don't oh know if you can see gosh. any of them on there yeah. yet. What I'm hopefully going to do is tip this over. Yikes. All right, that's no. And get it out into this enclosure. And then we may cut for a minute while I get it into a catch cup. And then I'm going to try to get, before there was mite, actually it doesn't, yeah, there are some on it. I think there were a bunch on it yesterday. All right, so you're going to want to back off just a little bit while I try to prod this one out. There it goes. Now, hopefully it should not be able to get... Oh, no, no, no! That didn't work too well. I don't like these things at all. Oh, my God. All right. I'm not going to lie. Heart's going a mile a minute. Oh, I do have the head cam on, so hopefully we catch some of this. Oh my gosh. I'm going to get this ready just in case it can. I don't think it's tall enough to get up there, but if Billy wants to get some footage of it. Oh, oh you had it and you lost it. Okay. I can't see, so. Oh. Ah. Yeah. I see. That thing gets out, I'm going to literally scream. Get ready. But don't get ready, no. Don't get ready, nope. Got it. Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> All right, so I have rehoused, oh, God, hundreds of tarantulas, big ones, little ones. This one's got my heart race. I'm not going to lie. I can't predict the movements. It's so fast. Even with the David Bowies that I keep joking about that I keep, that I've, <clears throat> as I choke on my own saliva, the David Bowies that I keep to get out a lot, I've gotten much better at predicting where they're going to go, which makes it easier to catch them. These guys, not so much. So what we're going to do in a minute is I'm going to go ahead and slide this, hopefully slide this underneath. It's going to be tough because they don't climb like tarantulas do. It usually makes it easier. But slide this underneath, get it out, and then we're going to try to examine it to see if I can get any of the mites that are on it off. I have a paintbrush, and what I'm going to do is dip it in some warm water and try to get them off. You can use Q-tips, but honestly, I'm not putting my fingers that close to this thing. These guys pack a nasty bite. My buddy Fruck Pudding, hopefully you'll see this one. Maybe I'll shoot him one. He has... Uh, centipedes he's kind of like the master of them and i don't know how he does this with the bigger ones oh, oh listen to god, that god it's awful i don't want to miscalculate this one all right so we're going to go ahead i'm going to take this off i'm going to make billy get nice and close with this we did it without getting any of the dirt out. Hey, this is what you get paid for. I'm not going to get paid anything for this. You get comments all the time. It's All right, just come over here. We got this. I can do it. I don't care. Wait, what do you want me to do exactly? Let's see if we can blow up. I'll grab this part. You keep the cardboard. Sorry, we're switching cameras. A person here. And let's see if we can see any of the... I don't see. I'm using. I'm actually peering through my viewfinder right now, trying to see. And they don't look to be. Uh, uh, there's a couple, I think. There, right in there, those little white dots, which look a little slower. So what I'm going to do is try to get some, some water on her in a minute, and I think probably I'm going to need all hands on deck for this one. So we may just stop it here. Um, of course, if it goes up the brush and gets me, we're going to miss some some gold here. This could be my breakthrough. So we're going to go ahead and break here for a second and see how this works, and then we'll come back when I put it in the new enclosure. A little bit in there. They don't seem to be attached to it. So they're just going to, like, get the water Yeah, on just them. a little bit. It's, it's heads above the water, but I'm just getting a little bit on, and I can see some of them already floating. Oh, that's a great idea, then. It's not moving very much. It's amazing. Shh, don't jinx me. It's going to explode and I'm going to poop my 
myself. You gotta keep that in. <laughs> Alright. So, we'll keep part of this in. What we've done here, just to, we put some water in here. It's heads above the water. It's not, it's not going to drown. I don't want anybody panicking. And literally, it's only been about 30 seconds. But what we did is put some water in here and then gently stroking off some of them. That sounds horrible. It's okay. And it's frozen completely up. So now we're going to get it into its new enclosure. So here we go. Here's the covering. Uh, Give me the, the top of that so we can put it on really quickly. I'm not putting it on though. I'll hold it here. And I'm going to have to try to get the water out without the thing coming out. That thing was really well behaved considering. Should we put this in there? So if it put this in there. Hmm? The, put the cage in there so if Go it, ahead. I can't. I only no, have no, no, it's okay. Wait, try to get not in the water. Uh, didn't think this through very well. And there it goes. All right. Get a good shot of it. That actually worked. Oh my god, it's gorgeous. <laughs> Hopefully gorgeous all the cameras creepy. are catching this. I'm going to go over and bring my other camera over. So we'll have two. Now what I have in here now is some cocoa fiber that isn't, it's moist at the bottom but dry at the top. What I'm hoping is it'll let it dry out just a hair. I'm going to put a water dish in. Oh, there it goes. But hopefully this will help keep the population down. I do think in the other enclosure it was in, there are probably some pieces of cricket and stuff of that nature, which is what they are attracted to, the mites. So I'm guessing that was probably part of the issue. But hopefully we'll be able to keep them down. Mites are a pain in the butt. So if it is mites, and I'm going to throw these under a microscope in a minute, then they are tough to eradicate. They normally, if they're grain mites, do not hurt the animals. But it does freak anybody out to see little white things. And I will, obviously you'll have seen it because I'm going to post that feeding video at the beginning of this. You can see them all around. But it's a little unsettling to see them crawling all over them. So there we go. That went pretty well overall. Well, not my best rehousing. But again, trying to predict what these guys are going to do is a little bit difficult. They're very fast. They pack a heck of a bite. And I don't feel like going to the hospital. I was at... Uh, Dinkies today in Massachusetts, and they had a big, I believe, what was it, 10 inch one? It was an adult, wasn't it? Feather, was it? No, the, the one they had one of these oh. before, and it bit a kid who was trying to hold it like twice. a ding dong twice. Apparently, he tried to feed it out of his hand, and then he tried to hold it, and he got bit twice. Or two different people got bit doing two different stupid things. So, in both cases, they were miserable. So, there we go. I'm going to move this camera back. And we have to do another one, so the fun has not ended, but I don't think I'm going to tape the other one because I want to be able to concentrate, and I'll admit this one got me sweating a little bit. So this will be fun to rehouse when it hits to be like 8 inches or so. So there we go, Scolopendra de Hani, the oh, giant, some type of giant centipede. I'm terrible with the common names, but I'll obviously look it up. And what I'm going to do is moisten a corner in here, put a water dish in for it. It should be completely fine. All right, so that actually went pretty well overall. That was the first time I've tried to rehouse one of these guys now that they put on some size. That one's probably about four and a half inches or so. And the trick is they can shoot up tongs. They can go up the sides, get over in the side of an enclosure if it's tall enough that they can stand up and reach the edge of it. And I was pushing it a little bit because the Sterilite container I was using did have a lip on it that it could have gotten on. But we made it. Good thing because Billy would have killed me if it had gotten out. So now, after we got all that done, we went and put them on the microscope. And you can see here, and I'm going to go ahead and run the footage, what we're looking at. There they are. Now, those were moving a little bit too quickly as far as grain mites are concerned, and it kind of threw me off a bit. I had put springtails in some enclosures, but those weren't springtails, and I knew I hadn't put any with that one yet. So then I was left kind of scratching my head. Now, if anybody was paying attention, early in the video, I mentioned possibly breaking out my predatory mites to help deal with this mess. And I started thinking, I do have predatory mites. Now, if everybody can think back to when I talked about my problem with fungus gnats, it was killing me. I had fungus gnats and a bag of substrate was infested with them. And I got them in a bunch of enclosures. It was terrible. And I was having a very difficult time eradicating them. A, a buddy of mine that I had been corresponding with on Facebook, Joshua Odin, 
was gracious enough to not only instruct me on how to use predatory mites, but to actually send me some predatory mites, which was fantastic. And again, Joshua, this was long overdue. Thank you so much. You've been a huge resource for me with all of this mess. So I use the predatory mites in some of my enclosures. They will not harm the arachnids, but they will eat the larvae of the fungus gnats, which does away with them. So I no longer have fungus gnats here because these guys were beautiful in eradicating them. However, like a ding dong, I left some of these mites, which are, I have a hard time pronouncing it, hypo, hypo, Po, hy, here we go. Hypospis miles mites. There we go. Predatory mites. Little white guys. And I started thinking, wait a minute. Is it possible some of those could have gotten in the enclosure, which was one of the ones that I did have the fungus gnats in? Could they have gotten into that enclosure with my centipedes? Well, come to find out, this, which has the mites in it, was sitting right next to the centipede enclosure, and there are little teeny tiny holes that I failed to notice. And I noticed when I opened this last time, it looked like it was fairly empty. Well, problem solved. I ended up uh, contacting Joshua and said, hey, could you look at a, some footage here after making fun of myself in a long Facebook post and tell me if these are the predatory mites, and they were. They moved like the predatory mites. They looked like the predatory mites. They were the predatory mites. So. Long story short, mystery solved. What ended up happening is these little guys decided they didn't want to be in here anymore. They wanted to kind of spread out and broaden their horizons. They moved over to the both centipede enclosures, which worked out great because they got rid of all the fungus gnats. But then I didn't realize they were in there. They reproduced like madmen. So the centipede has been rehoused. The centipede substrate I had put aside because now I have my own little colony of these guys. I got a lot of predatory mites to use. And I'm going to go back and check the other ones that I used in to make sure they hadn't blown up in there. But they have posed no, no ill effects toward my centipede whatsoever. They got rid of the fungus gnats, and I would use them again the heartbeat to get rid of them. So again, Joshua Odin, thank you so much for your help on this. I truly appreciate it. Billy and I kind of, this was a wild weekend, about a three-day stretch where all this happened, where we, we fed them, we did the rehousing, got a hold of Josh, who got right back to me, which was great, and figured this out. So there you go, guys. I don't know everything. I scrub every once in a while. And this one, luckily, you know, they were good mites. They went in, they did their job, and they posed no threat to my centipede whatsoever. And the centipede is eaten again since then and is doing fine. So problem solved. So long story short, we have solved the mystery of the mites. But again, if you get the grain mites, one thing you can do, clean out the area where they, they're going to feed on dead prey, stuff of that nature. That attracts them. So make sure you get those boluses out of those, those cricket parts, the roach parts, whatever it may be. If you can, if it's a species, you can let it dry out a bit. It kills them quickly. I had it with one of mine. I let the enclosure dry out completely, but just kept the water dish elevated. It was an arboreal species, a little easier. And before you know it, there was none there. And if you have to do a rehouse, toss the substrate, get some new substrate in there, and try to pick all the ones you can off of your tarantula using a Q-tip, cotton swab, and get them out of the way before you put it back in. Again, try to keep it dry when you first rehouse it. That'll help knock them down. And if there's no food prey, food stuff for them to eat, they should die off pretty quickly. But they can be annoying and they can explode. So I know Exotic Slayer just dealt with them. So he's got a great video on it. I'll put it on the end where how he dealt with them because he doesn't like them either. Nobody does. So there you have it. That was about as much talking as I've ever done for the video. But hopefully this was a little educational for people. And I will be doing a video update on the predatory mites just specifically because they did work so well. And again, thanks to Josh for all his help. So that'll about do it for this one. If you want to check out more of my videos, you can find them right about in here. If you liked it so much that you want to subscribe, always appreciate. You can click that up there. Again, I love comments. I try to respond to every single one of them as in a timely manner as I can. So please leave some comments. We love hearing from people who've been there for a while. And I love hearing from people who just started watching because you know, it makes me feel like I'm doing something right. So thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys all next time. I'm going to get a glass of water. My throat hurts.